What's going on, people? It's your man, the YB, back once again. So, we've got some shocking and breaking news right now, 100%. Michael Benson came out a few days ago and said, Tifimo Lopez has now officially told the WBO that he has vacated his WBO super lightweight world title. He is adamant he has retired from boxing. Now, I read this, and sometimes, obviously, like, like all of us in the media game, people get things wrong, people lead with things without evidence and I, I can't believe listen if you follow the channel you know that historically speaking or particularly in this Tia Fimo example or anyone anyone who comes out and says they're retired I don't believe it I'm retired and they hang around and they come back Tyson Fury for example loads and most of them in fact all of them so I didn't believe it I don't believe it anyway two twos I then was doing some searching and Tiafimo Lopez's page came up. And this Paco guy, I think is he some sort of, yeah, the president of the WBO World Boxing. Yeah, World Boxing Organization, whatever it is, WBO. <laughs> He's the president, yeah? So the president tweeted, just now Tiafimo Lopez is texting me that he has relinquished his junior world to weight title. We should respect his decision. If he comes back, WBO doors will always be open for him. Wow. Tiafimo replies, Thank you, everyone, for making the greatest moments in my career. Great one. Thank you to Top Rank ESPN for creating the takeover into a real thing. I am forever grateful for all the sanctioning bodies in boxing for showing me I can and am more than boxing. What a career. Listen, I, I think it's a bad move. Well, we'll see a year from now. Yeah, If TFE Lopez isn't back a year from now, he probably ain't coming back, truth be known. It could happen, I guess. I think he's 25, so even at 26, he'd still be super young. I think it's a bad move, though. I really do. I think... I understand Tio wants to do things out of boxing, but... At least get to 30. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, Well, at least get to 30-odd. 30, 30 33, 34. Like, for example, Canelo. He probably sh should be walking away now. To, you know what I'm saying? One of them ones. Well, even, even Canelo. Canelo should fight Benavidez. I think Canelo smokes Benavidez, but... Fight Benavidez... Fight Bivol, and then I think Canelo's done. Then maybe fight Charlo, but that's not many fights. Still, he's 33, 34, whatever he is. Canelo is. Tio going at 25. You you're much whatever influence. Like for example, Tifimo's put in his thing. He's an entrepreneur or whatever. He's taking the boxing out. I get the hint that he wants to do. Well, he said he wants to do things outside of boxing, but. You're much more able to influence things outside of boxing once you've defined a bit a more what's the word? A more solid legacy. This now is just a bad look. Not a bad look. Fair listen, fair play to the guy. I respect him for doing what he said he's gonna do. I said last week that I think it's cap. I think he's lying and just saying what they all say, I'm retired. But fair play to him for following through. I respect that as a man. He said he's gonna do something, he's done it. Now that conversation is completely different to whether it's a smart move or not. I think it's a stupid move. Now, people probably, oh, YB, you've been a big T.O. hater. Call it what you want, man. <laughs> it probably, yeah, I probably sound like I was hating. I ain't gonna lie, but... I don't want to sound like I'm hating again. However, after that performance, if T.O. really does retire on that performance, yeah... Does that signal that he feels he can't get any better? Does that signal that, you know, I've, that was the best I can ever be? That's how it almost feels to me. It's almost like Tio fell off after the Lomachenko win. And I'm not sure. Well, listen, he's proven everything against the odds, so I'm probably wrong again. I was wrong predicting the Taylor fight. I was wrong saying he's finished, so I'm probably wrong again. But I have to go with what my gut's telling me. My gut's telling me potentially, as an option at least. Is it the case, Tio's kind of like, Tio felt good after the Lomachenko win. He felt so good that that really was the start of his downfall. He started believing the hype. And he went in there with Cambosos and slipped on a banana skin. So just, Tio said himself, I want to go out on, on the top, which he is essentially doing. But, going out on the top, it's a bit, what's the word? I wonder why he's doing it. Is he doing it because he feels like, I don't want to fall off again. 
Do you know what I'm saying? If you leave at the top, it means you can't slip up. Which is a bit of a shame. Because for someone who has talent like him, I'm not saying ride it like Roy Jones did and ride it till the wheels fall off, but... You know what I mean? There's, there's so many, especially at that weight division, there's so many dense fights. Haney. Regis. Tank. Do you know what I'm saying? Well, I say there's so many, but really there's a limited amount. It wouldn't take long, would it? It wouldn't take long for Tio to wipe up some of these ones. He'd be, what, 27, 28? I mean, 30 really makes sense to me at Tio's age. 30 should be the thing where if you're going to walk away, you walk, walk away at 30, not 25, man. Because you can't get them yet. That's the, what I'd be telling Tio is, I respect what you're saying, yeah? But listen, the way boxing is today, you can fight once a year if you want. Yeah? Have a camp, stay in the gym ticking over and fight once a year. Not that I'd recommend it, but if I was really with Tio like that, I'd be telling him, man, listen, I respect your decision, yeah? Obviously, you're going to do what you're going to do anyway, but you can't go backwards, do you understand? It's no good getting to 30 and then saying, oh, man. I wish I hadn't, because these are your best, literally your best years. This is the worst way to do anything like that. Because once you're 31, you're 31. You can never be stronger at, well, some people say you can, but you can never be more youthful, put it that way, at 31, 32 than you can at 25. Plus he's still learning and still growing. Do you know what I'm saying? He's only just moved up from 135. He hasn't even got his... Look at how big Josh Taylor was. He hasn't even got his 140 strength yet. I just think it's... I think... I think emotionally... He got so high off that win. I mean, even me, who was a hater. I was high off his win. So I think all them good chemicals went to his head and he just thought, he can't get no better than this. Which it might not be, to be... Listen, they're all hard fights. But I can't, I can't lie to you. Tio... I was saying before this, I was saying before this that Tio might be the Southpaw killer. Well, look at Progray's last fight. Yeah? I ain't gonna Listen, that just showed me that I ain't putting no money nowhere on nothing. <laughs> yeah. Look how average Progray looked. He got a he got a close decision win at the weekend. All due respect, yeah, I can see Tio going in there. He loved to fight Southpaws, it seems. Loma. Um, Josh Taylor. I can't... I think that fight's... I'd have told you it's 90-10 for the pro grade a week ago. Or two weeks ago. Now I'm telling you it's a 50-50 fight. Do you know what I'm saying? Imagine that. Imagine Tio goes in there, smokes pro grade. Go, you know what I mean? Smoke, tank's another southpaw. Tank moves up, moves up to 140. Smokes Tank. You know what I'm saying? Has a good fight with Devin Haney. I just think there's too much to leave on the table, man. Not even just... I'm not talking money. I'm talking about... Tio legitimately, at the moment, is saying, oh, I'm going down as the greatest thing ever. Listen, you're not. Yeah, you've had inconsistency. But if Tio beats Progre, if Tio beats Devin Haney at 140, I think legitimately he's, he's up there. I'd put him above, not in terms of skill, but I'd put him above. His 140 run would be better than Crawford's, hands down, easy. And he, he'll be going down as one of the best 40-pounders of all time at that point. Having one win there against Josh Taylor, who didn't look his best. But listen, T.O. made Josh Taylor look his best, but it's the consistency. Why? Why now? Don't do it. Don't do it. Because time don't wait for no man. But if he has chosen to do it, I respect it. Do you know what I mean? Because he's more of a man than me. I'll be hanging around, squeezing bits out. But for, listen, fair play to the guy. The guy's... I was clowning the dude saying, oh, he's not... Kind of not a real man or whatever, but he a real man. You know what I'm saying? Doing something don't make no sense. And <laughs> committing to something that is against your best interests. That takes real character. You know what I mean? Anyone can hang around and milk the game for more money, can't they? Or milk the game for more clout. Anyone. Look at AJ. Anthony Loshua. Yeah? He hanging around just milking it. Got no passion or whatever else. So Tio walking away. If he feels he's giving it all, I salute anyway. Let's see how it plays out. I hope... I hope he's, this is one of the rare occasions I hope someone's lying. I hope he's really about to get with it, with it, with it. you know what I'm saying? I hope he, somehow, I hope he, hopefully his dad, but then again, would we even want Tio back if he's been talked into it? 
Tio seems to be at his best when the, the cards are down. And maybe he understands that. Maybe he understands what happened after Cambosa's fight. I think, you know what? I've got to the top now. Because he's claiming he's got to the top. Maybe he doesn't see the Devin Haney fight or the pro grade fighters rising above the Josh Taylor fight. Which, in quality they do. But I'm not, yeah. Clearly he doesn't. Anyway, let me know your thoughts. Smash the like button, subscribe. And let off the bell 100% and all that.